Charles on Masson, and it's base band at night here at the ballpark. Big crowd expected as the Orioles and Rangers meet for the second time and just the second time this year. Nate McClaus night with the base band and T-shirts being given away. Some 30,000 expected for this game number two. Well, the Rangers and Orioles neither hitting starting the series last night. The Rangers found a way to put eight runs up on the board last night. The Orioles got five. Nothing wrong with that, except it wasn't enough. Thought we'd take a look at the pitching for the Orioles here in a month of July where they're struggling a bit. I thought when we started that maybe the numbers would be very positive. Actually, for the starters, well, not all that great. They've gone 0-3 with a 4.97 ERA. Opponent batting average is very high. The uh, walk strikeout ratio, not a good one in 41 and two-thirds innings work. Now, the bullpen, on the other hand, even though the record is 2-2, two and two, a real good ERA, the opponent batting average way down at 169. You see the opponent's 317 average with runners in scoring position. One of the reasons that's been such a problem is the Orioles have not been able to do anything with the runners in scoring position for the first seven games. Well, uh, Mike, uh, regarding the starters, I think both of us thought when we went to those numbers, it might look a little better. Yeah, I thought so too. I mean, it seems like they're pitching a lot better. They've been pitching better. They're getting deeper into ball games, which I think is a key for them. And Buck Walters talked about it all year long. He has to get the rotation to get deeper to protect the bullpen, and it allows him to use matchups throughout the ball game. And I think they have been, especially here in July. They're starting to pitch a little bit deeper in ball games, but they're still not able to really close the door. Obviously, giving up some runs. They're a high earned run average, but the bullpen has been real solid for them. So Buck is a able to match up a little bit better so the deeper this or, uh, rotation gets the better the bullpen's going to get throughout the year and uh, tonight Zach Britton gets another opportunity the left-hander will take on the Rangers when we come back for game two and we'll see if both of these teams have their bats out tonight by Chapin Davis Investments, Baltimore's oldest and largest full-service investment company. Call 1-800-222-3246 or visit ChapinDavis.com. Great Camden Yards, the Orioles in Texas. They are meeting for the first time this season. Take a look at our train game time temperature. 86 degrees. Humidity's actually down a little bit. And some overcast with the clouds rolling on by. Train celebrating in the 100th anniversary, offering irresistible financing. It is hard to stop a train. Really hard. Take a look at the starting lineup. A couple of changes. Kensler Profire did not play last night. Cruz, Beltre, Pierzynski, Andrus Murphy. Torinos we did not see in the ballgame last night. And Martin Kensler, big night last night, equaled his career high in RBIs. 
there's the scouting report tonight for Zach Britton. He is finding his form. He has shown steady improvement over his last starts. Four starts since being recalled. Two and one with a 2.74. His last outing, he threw seven strong innings against Chicago. And the reason why he's starting to trust his stuff a lot more is being more aggressive in the zone and letting that two-seam fastball work for him. But the key has always been for Zach Britton, strike one. He has got to get ahead. And Zach will certainly have success. It leads to a lot more early contact, a lot more ground ball outs. He's made five starts this year, 4.03 earned run average, but that has been coming down as of late. 12 strikeouts and 12 base on balls. There's a look at the opponent batting average at 284. Lefty's 324, and righty's just 268. And we are ready to go here in game two as Ian Kensler will stand in. This is a red hot bat in the lineup as he's had a, he has a seven game hit streak. And as we said in the ball game last night, ended up with a two for five, which uh, equaled a career at high in RBIs in a ball game with four. The big blow, sixth inning, a bases loaded double. Ron Washington's team for the second time, 52 and 37, their best above 500, 15 games. They have not been higher than that this season. Kensler will file that one away. And a two strike count on him. Well, good start for Zach Britton. Really aggressive with his fastball. At first pitch to get ahead, a little two seamer down in the zone. If he can throw that for strikes, you're going to see this Texas lineup start swinging early. And that could eventually lead to obviously more ground ball outs, but keep Zach Britton in this ball game for a long time. Count 0 and 2. Delivery on the way, and that'll be taken outside for a ball. Ken Slurp. Faced uh, Britain three times and has gone 0 for 3 against the Oriole left hander. Good lead off batter up in the front of the box. 1 2 pitch to him and that will be grounded off. They have a couple of stances, Rangers do, of players that I don't know they're, that they look like anybody else. Kinsler's one of them. It's not an odd stance, it's just. It looks different. He's very straight up at the plate. He is very steady, very quiet. Kind of opens it up with that front leg. And then you got Pazinski who opens it way up and has his head facing right straight out towards the pitcher with both eyes on him. All right. Everybody has uh, different approaches to their setup in the box and all very unique. But I think you hit the nail on the head when you said quiet. A lot of hitters nowadays will stand up there. It looks like they're almost asleep. And then as soon as the pitcher goes in and wind up, that's when they start to load as well. One two delivery will be taken inside. Perhaps Evan Longoria, the example, best example of that, huh? Yeah. I, mean, I think he's the quietest guy I've seen. And talk about relax. It almost looks like he's gonna fall down. Yeah, exactly. Till the pitch comes. Then you fall down. Mm -hmm. Two two delivery. And that just missed. So Kensler is able to work the count full. Three balls and two strikes on the leadoff batter. That was a pretty good take right there from Kinsler on a very good fastball from Zach Britton. Good two seamer down at the bottom of the zone. And that ball put high up in the air to left field. It is back on the warning track, but playable. And will be hauled in by McClark. Kinsler just missed him. Now here's a look at the Orioles defense. Behind Zach Britton, Nate McLeod, Adam Jones, and Nick Markakis in the outfield. J.J. Hardy at shortstop. Brian Roberts getting the start at second base. Once again, Machado and Davis on the corners with Matt Wieters behind the plate. Texas Rangers against left-handers have gone 17 and 11 this year. That is the fourth best win percentage against lefties in the majors. The Rays are number one. The Red Sox are number two. The A's are three and the Rangers are four. So the top four team win percentages against lefties all belong to top five all belong to American League teams and you get the Atlanta Braves of the National League followed by the Yankees. Well, the American League uh, teams especially in the East have done a number on left handers as far as winning games against them are concerned. That's what Britain comes up against here in this game. Yeah, certainly has to try to find a way to contain this Rangers offense. They were slow coming in, but they uh, really came alive in last night's ball game. And the pitch taken for a strike. This is Profire. Erickson Profire. Curacao, only 20 years old. He is in and out of the lineup, has even started to learn to play the outfield. He is a shortstop, which is where he is tonight. 2 1 delivery on the way to him and a chopper that'll go foul. 
talking to some of the Ranger people they said one of the reasons pro fire is up here is that the front office of the Orioles wanted Ron Washington to get his starters out of the game more and Washington did not feel he had a bench last year that he could do that with and the team withered in the final month and lost a chance to win the division. So they said all right we'll bring up the best we got pro fire their number one prospect. So you got to play him. Two two delivery put in the air to center field Jones has got it lined up. Two down. Take a look at Zach Britton here his first start look at that earned run average way up to nine point oh and that opponent batting average at three seventy but he has made some great improvements his last three starts that earned run average all the way down to three point oh six opponent average at two sixty one he is certainly starting to believe in the stuff that he has and those numbers are really improving well for Zach Britton and starting to stabilize himself in this Orioles rotation if he keeps having these consistent starts he's going to be in there for a long time here is Nelson Cruz extended his hit streak to four with a one for four in the ball game last night oh one delivery coming left handers pitch away for Zach Britton against Texas his only career start April 9 of 2011. It came here at Camden Yards. He worked seven and two thirds scoreless innings and got the win in the ball game. It's only the second time he has seen this team. Started this season on the DL. The left shoulder problem had 11 starts in Norfolk, where he went three and two with the three two eight called up to the majors, and they're trying to make sure he stays here. Pressure's on for all the starters, and that's intentional. There are six of them. But Joe Walters made it clear for the moment they're all going to stay. But they won't when the All Star breaks down. And a nice play made by Hardy in a clean inning for Britain. He retires the side in order. A look at the Orioles lineup against the left hander. Only come back. This big house on hand for the ball game, and here's the starting lineup for the Orioles against the left-hander for Texas: Marquez, Machado, and Jones, Davis, Hardy, and Weeders, McLeod, Roberts, and Rymold. This month, Nick has had the hot bat. And here's a scouting report for Martin Perez tonight. He is another one of the young guns in this Rangers rotation. He was a, a prospect after signing back in 2007. Out of Venezuela, but just 22 years old, and he has been very impressive since recently being recalled. 2 0 with a .95 earned run average. He has a good mix, quality fastball. He works in the low 90s, a slider change, occasional curveball, but a quality change from this lefty. Got a great arm sell, and he throws it off his fastball, and he will throw it to both righties and lefties. There's the numbers on the year. Four starts, 2 and 1 with a 1.85, 12 punch outs with six base on balls, on an average 292. And Nick Marcakis will take the pitch for a strike. Nick started the uh, series out against Texas this year, picking up a base hit in the uh, ball game last night. Nick continues in that leadoff spot against the left-handers, one for five last night. 
And he will foul that one away. Perez is interesting. The Orioles have not seen him pitch before. He's got two different speeds on his changeup. He throws 181 or 82. He throws another at 88 or even a little higher because his fastballs can be 96 or 97. That's foul back into the seats. Yeah, he's got a strong fastball. His two seamer. He works in the low 90s, and he he can hump up on a four seamer and get it to 96 and 97 miles an hour at times. And there is quite a discrepancy in his changeup. You know, he throw it low 80s, and then he'll jump it up there in the you know high 80s, almost like a BP type fastball. But anything to keep hitters off balance. Find very few pitchers who can do that. Fouled away. Think of the Cy Young winner R.A. Dickey, who's got. Three or four different speeds on the knuckleball is right. one of the few that's ever been able to do that. But very few pitchers will have a changeup that they intentionally throw at two different speeds. 0 oh, 2 count on Marquegas. Manny Machado and then Jones up here in the first inning for the Orioles. 0 oh, 2 delivery. That'll go down the left field line. Murphy was playing over that way. Puts it away for the out. Marquegas is retired. Might be interested to know this Texas team has relied on rookie pitchers this season. 36 starts. They've played uh, to a 13 13 record in those starts for the rookie pitchers. The team is 20 and 16. ERA not that good under just a little bit under five. They do strike people out. Not a great strikeout to walk ratio. Opponent average not great. And it's grim. You got Tepish who's gone on the DL and Perez is pitching in this game. But I don't think many people realize this Texas team has had that many rookies. There's a Baltimore chop. Manny Machado digging. Beltre gets him. Two down. And take a look at the Rangers defense tonight behind Perez. Murphy, Martin, Cruz in the outfield. Profar getting the start at shortstop. Adam Kinzo back at second base. Beltre, nice play right there at third base. Chirinos at first, and A.J. Przinski, the veteran catcher behind the plate. That'll bring up Adam Jones. Three game hit streak, extending it with a two for five that he had in the ball game last night. He's a lifetime 288 hitter against Texas with seven home runs. The Orioles have uh, split the last 10 games played, they are five and five. Texas has got a two game win streak coming into this ball game. The Orioles now have been passed into second place in the American League East by Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is a game ahead of the Orioles. Tampa Bay is three and a half behind Boston. Orioles four and a half. The Yankees five and Toronto nine. Yeah uh, since the Orioles are playing the Yankees kind of took your eye off Tampa Bay and of course they were right in the rear view mirror. That'll go to short. Profire is there. The youngsters throw. And that will do it. So both pitchers have clean innings in the first. And uh, here in game two of this four game set, no score. Yes, you can sign up for Masson's Touch 'em All Rewards. 
and you just follow share and score great prices. Go to MassInSports.com to sign up. Being social has its rewards. Sure. No score here as we go to the uh, second inning. Beltre, Pierzynski, and Andrus up. We're talking about Tampa Bay and the run they are making right now. Tampa Bay is being helped uh, by former Oriole Luke Scott. He's hit 368 with 11 RBIs in his last 18 games. He's got a 425 average with runners in scoring position, and Madden's moved him to the number two spot. Wow. Well, you knew Luke Scott has that ability. I mean, there are a lot of hitters in the big leagues that. Can really carry teams, and when a hitter like Luke Scott heats up, he certainly has that ability. They've won nine out of ten to move into second place. Here's Adrian Beltre, the All-Star with a ten-game hit streak, had a two for three in the ball game last night. Beltre hitting 318 against left-handers, nine points higher than against righties. Beltre will put that one up in the air to center field. Jones going back. That's near the warning track in the wall, and goodbye home run. Into the seats, into right center field goes Beltre. That is going to be his 17th career home run against the Orioles, and 10 of them have been here at Camden Yards in a 1 0 lead. Well, Beltre seeing that Zach Britton trying to get ahead, but this is an elevated fastball right down the heart of the plate. Adrian Beltre is a dangerous hitter. You make mistakes and he's going to make you pay. And he did on that one. 19 home runs and 48 RBIs for Beltre. And uh, Britain surrenders the long ball. The Orioles had not given up a home run in the last 35 and a third innings over the last four games in the first inning of this one. That's the first opponent home run in uh, 35 and a third innings. But it's a home run, and it's one nothing. Here's A.J. Pierzynski, one for three in the ball game last night for the catcher, and the off-speed delivery will be fouled off as he jumped on a pitch that was up high to him. Chris Davis going off into foul territory. The Oriole All-Star is finding out about the responsibilities that come with the joy of making the All-Star team. <laughs> yeah. Camera crews on hand today having to shoot different shots of the players on and off the field. 1-1 one, one delivery and a swing and a miss on that one. Pruszynski reaching with a one-handed finish. Almost knocks his feet off with his bat. He was so disgusted at the at the swing he took. Well, when you have as many career at bats as A.J. Pruszynski, you'd think you'd uh, have to recognize breaking balls, and he certainly showed how uh, disgusted he was in the swing he had. Tried again outside. Britain has surrendered three home runs now in the 30 innings that he has worked. Two hit by the right handers one by a lefty. Pierzynski two ball two strike delivery and he'll take it. And he gets the count full three balls and two strikes. Britain facing the number one road team in the American League. Texas now 25 and 19 for their road record. 3 2 delivery. Pierzynski chops it foul twice. <laughs> he holds the count at 3 and 2. Look, Showalter with. Chris Dickerson, who's on the bench for the ball game tonight. That's a chopper to short. It'll be a tough play. Hardy guns it. Didn't get him. That was about a six hopper. Machado thought about trying to cut it off, but Hardy was closer, and it'll be an infield hit for Pizinski. Yeah, it's in a tough spot, but Manny probably should have been a little more aggressive. JJ getting kind of sucked in towards that third base line. And that throw pulls Chris Davis off. A.J. Pruszynski kind of sniffing out that hit. Really put some pressure on J.J. So Pruszynski is on. Two up, two on here in the inning. That'll bring up Elvis Andrus. Andrus is the D.H. in the ball game tonight. So he gets a break from being on the uh, field. Five-game hit streak for him. Two for four in the ball game last night. And Andrus will take the pitch for a strike. 
Andrus during the streak hitting a 290 in the five games. Third time he has started as a DH. Breton Pazinski close to the bag. Ground ball, second base. Roberts, Hardy, Davis. That's how you do it right there. When Zach Britton's two seamer is working, he's going to get a lot of ground balls. Pazinski hit a weak ground ball. And Andrews follows it up. A nice clean double play there for the Orioles. For Britain, 55% of his outs this year have come on the ground ball. What Mike says, boy, it really comes in handy. You can pick up those double plays. Two down now, nobody on. Here's Murphy. Wow. That's As the man in Milwaukee might have said, just a little bit outside. <laughs> All right. But I'll tell you what, those kind of swings come early in account. If you're aggressive in the strike zone early and show that you're going to attack that strike zone, try to get ahead. A lot of hitters are going to chase. Here's the old Wendell every turn. He takes it to center field. That's an atom ball. A run in on two hits. No errors. Nobody left on. The home run by Beltre, his 19th, gives him an 11 game hit streak and gives Texas a lead. from Ellicott City. Thomas, you've already won 500 for being selected. You get 100 more for every Orioles hit and an extra 500 for any Orioles home run in the fifth inning. For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery hit at big contestant of the game, play five card cash. Go to mdlottery.com slash Orioles to enter today. The learning process that never ends. Yeah, Bobby Dickerson talking to Manny Machado over there probably about that play with uh, that J.J. Hardy fielded off A.J. Przinski's bat. They're telling him to be a little bit more aggressive on that. Even though J.J. Hardy, obviously a gold glove type shortstop, you try to make plays that are going to be as efficient as possible, and the infield has to work together. And in that situation, that play is easier if Manny cuts it off. One ball, one strike count on Chris Davis. Chris had the golden sombrero along with Matt Wieters last night. Each struck out four times in the ball game. One ball, one strike delivery. Davis will take that one into the shift. Kinsler at second base. And one away here in the second inning. The Orioles Rangers continue their four game series tomorrow and Thursday. Both games at Oriole Park, 7 05. So gather up the family friends and back the birds in the hunt for the playoffs. Get your tickets in advance and save 800 888 Bird or go to Orioles.com. That'll bring up J.J. Hardy. Hardy, a couple of hits in four at bats in the ball game. And a run scored in game one. Won by Texas 8 5 last night. Pitches on the outside corner for a strike. Field and Culbreth, the home plate umpire. Welke, Johnson, and Onora on the crew. Hardy with a big rip, and there's that fastball we were talking about. And 94 miles an hour. 
Some say there's a uh, like similar presentation to like what Holland featured last night. You know, that strong fastball. Pretty good at getting it in on righties. Right there, a good example. And I guess a pretty good guy to emulate if you're a young left-handed pitcher. There's a look at Holland right there. Pretty good numbers on the year. The delivery is a ground ball to third. Big shot. Beltray sets and gets the out. Hardy retired two away on ground balls. And that will bring up Matt Wieters. Matt Wieters had a red hot bat going last night. A big two run home run. He's four for ten in his last three games with two bombs. This one to right center. Inch the Orioles closer but just not quite enough. But it was a late inning home run. So Matt will stand in against the left hander with two down and uh, nobody on. And take the pitch down low. Leaders 227 off lefties, 233 off right handers. He's had a couple of home runs in the month of July, hitting 211 this month. Orioles coming in, two wins and five losses for the month of July. One ball, one strikeout from Perez. Martin Perez just turned 22. Gets that one in there. He was with Texas last year at the end. Of the season, he had 12 appearances, six starts. He went one and four. Here's the one two delivery on the way, and that will just miss outside. Two ball, two strike count. And they've always liked his arm. Went through some ups and downs. He's just a young player, obviously, coming up through the minor league, signed it just. 16 years old. Finds the hole. Infield shift was the other way. Kensler had moved way over to second base, and that spot is right where Weeders went. He's got a four game hit streak. Two down and one on. Take a look at our Hollywood Casino League leaderboard. Slots, tables, and dining. The ultimate triple play at Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. Yeah, look at the American League team leaders in slugging percentage. Of course, the Baltimore Orioles leading the way with 446. Red Sox just behind them, 445. Tigers with all their sluggers at 435. And the Rays creeping up. You talked about Luke Scott. He's adding to that number. And the Los Angeles Angels finish out the top five at 422. Two down runner on. Here's Nate McLeod. Takes the pitch for a ball. The Orioles slugging percentage against left handers is 415. Against right handers it is 460. The base banded t-shirts out tonight. Honoring Nate. And leading the Orioles in stolen bases all season long. McLeod on a check swing will foul that one away. Jacoby Ellsbury's got 36 stolen bases. Nate is second with 24. One ball, one strike out on him. It's a great T-shirt. That is an awesome shirt. Do we have any up here? No, oh, but we're going to get some. <laughs> one ball, one strike out. And Nate down to first, diving, knocked it down. Juninos is not going to have a play. That'll be an infield hit. And the Orioles' leaders goes to second on it. Well, Torino's kind of saved a, a double, but he overboogied on the dive. That ball gets underneath him, and that's why he lost sight of the baseball. He did knock it down, prevent extra bases. Pretty good effort. Take a look at the dive. As he starts his dive, he's thinking he's going to have to lay out. The ball ends up under his chest, ties him up a little bit. Good play to knock it down, but unable to get the out. Torino's a veteran over at first base. He's 29 years old, acquired this season. Picked up uh, in a trade with the Rays. Torino's getting the start at first base. So the Orioles have runners on at first and second, and here's Brian Roberts. And here's where the Orioles have had their problems. Last seven games, 128 with runners in scoring position, six for 47. Yeah, take a look. Obviously, that big dip in July, just 128 with runners in scoring position. April, May, and June, right at the top, 291, 281, and 296. Really, that offense is what's carried them this point. They're looking to ignite it again. 
There's one of them that's going to go to right field. Fall in for a base hit. It will bring Waiters around. Throw to the plate. All the way through. Way off the mark, though, allowing McLeod to advance. Roberts gets the base hit. The Orioles tie the ball game up at one. Good piece of hitting right there by Brian Roberts. You see the offering from Perez. That's in the outer third, and Brian stays through it, picking up a huge RBI. Take a look at the throw from Cruz. He airmails this one. Nate McLeod heads on over to third. Brian Roberts huh, probably should have been on second base in that situation. And that's probably that what the discussion was. You saw it first. Brian gets his fifth RBI, and this is the 12th game he's played in. And the Orioles tie the ball game up with a third hit at one apiece. This has been a problem for Perez this year. Getting the final out with runners in scoring position. Teams have hit 308 against it. When there have been two outs and runners in scoring position. And here's another chance. Nolan Rimo, the designated hitter for the Orioles tonight, batting in the nine spot. Two away. Rimo will take it inside for a ball. So the Orioles come right back and answer the home run by Beltre with uh, three consecutive two out hits and a run in. And that pitch will be taken inside. Two balls and no strikes. And you see how tough Perez uh, would be to run on. Brian Roberts, of course, a great base dealer throughout his career, but Perez very quick to the plate. Even if you go first move, times are very low. Rymold with a 2 0 delivery and will swing through that one. Nolan in and out of the lineup in left field and as a DH. He's had only 11 at bats so far in July. 3 4 11. As uh, he, Nate McLeod, Dickerson trying to get their time in, as are the three second basemen. Here's a 2 1 delivery. Ground ball down to third foul. Buck Showalter saying before the game today regarding the three at second. Casilla, Roberts, Flaherty. He uh, he really said they're all going to play. He said I expect Brian as he gets more into it to be in better shape and have his timing down, all the things that will come with it. But he said the others are going to play, and Brian knows that. Yeah. Well, they've all earned the right to play. I mean, see the defense Casilla has been playing here recently, yeah. and, uh, and Ryan Flaherty has been playing outstanding himself. So really there's no loss at all defensively whoever you put out there at second base. Two ball two strike count with two down and Rymo will take it inside Pierzynski with a stop. So Roberts will be going a three ball two strike count two away. A cloud to third. Brian will be held on the bag. They're not going to move the first baseman behind him with the right hander Rymo up. In the infield swung around playing into pull anyway. 3 2 delivery and he got it. So Perez will get his first strikeout. The Orioles, though, get a run on three hits. No errors. Two are left in this ball game's tied.
Tampa Bay Rays we were talking about 10 above 500 now they've won five straight nine at 10. The Red Sox on the road they've lost three in a row. Ellsbury and Victorino were both out last night. Victorino is back in the ball game tonight. They've probably lost their uh, bullpen member left hander Andrew Miller needing foot surgery probably out for the year. Former Oriole for a very short period. Travis Ishikawa has gone with the Yankees and last night started at first base. He went 0 for 2 a couple of strikeouts in his debut. What's going on around the American League East? A lot of people said Travis Ishikawa was going to end up with the Yankees. Their need for a first baseman. He is a good glove guy with major league experience. He's looking to try to help the Yankees. Britain with a ball game tied at one. We'll have eight, nine, and one in the order coming up. Robinson Chirinos will lead it off, laying at first base. Chirinos, as we said, a veteran acquired uh, from the Rays in order to give them a little help off the bench and uh, in the field again to rest some of their starters. He'll take the pitch up high. He's played in only 10 games with them, only 25 at bats. A couple of doubles among the six hits Chirinos has picked up. A lot of minor league experience. Not so much in the majors. Only 20 games prior to this year in the majors, covering about, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years of pro ball. 12 Best years of pro ball, 20 games in the majors. Yeah. Here's the 3 0 delivery on the way, and boy, is he taking advantage of it. From Venezuela, he has set up the Chirinos Foundation. They have uh, assisted youngsters in gloves, helmets, catching equipment. He's building a health clinic in his hometown for free medical services. So what money he's made along the way, he has given a lot back. He will draw a leadoff walk here in the third inning. Laid off a couple tough pitches right there. Obviously, all that minor league experience led to a quality batter's eye. The Chirinos is on. And uh, that will bring Leonez Martin to the plate. Martin had an offer in the ball game last night batting in the number nine spot as he did last night. Did get on and score a run when he reached on a fielder's choice. Top of the order Kensler waiting on deck. Bunting beauty that's a base hit. Can't do it any better than that if you walked out and placed it. Martin's got a bunch single. Oh, you're exactly right. I mean, that is just great execution right there. He gets a pitch that he can handle, and he uses it the right way. I mean, he was already a step and a half out of the box when he laid it down. Smart play by Zach Britton not to even attempt to throw. So runners on at first and second with nobody out. And Ian Kensler is coming to the plate. Texas last night had a 6 4 11 with runner in scoring position number. This is their first chance in this ball game. Kensler flying out to left field his first time up. Kensler's got the 370 batting average with runners in scoring position going. Infield for the double play. Kensler will take the pitch for a strike. Kinsler in these two games has watched the first pitch. And isn't even thinking about swinging it. Oh one. Kinsler eighth in the league with runners in scoring position with that average. We have a Davis who is third, Machado who is sixth, and Kinsler who is eighth all in this ball game. Dave has been up there one or two and Manny Machado in the top five virtually all year. Because he can say that about every category. Here's the one one delivery to him another check swing they got to play it second at least. There's one and that's it. Roberts coming over to cover fielders choice. Torinos will move over to third base one away. That's a nice aggressive play by Zach Britton right there. He bounced off the mound well. Now Zach's a really good athlete. You see how quickly he gets off the mound. And his thought is get that lead runner, keep that double play in order. And a good stretch by Brian Roberts as well 
to get that out and keep this double play in order because Zach Britton is always just one pitch away from a ground ball. Then he and Hardy confer to make sure now they know who's going to be covering second base if it happens again. They almost collided. Yeah, they did. They that were was both. Close. They were both coming in. That's why that communication between short and second is so important and with the pitcher so that he knows who's going to be there who he's looking for. Here is Profire fly down his first time up. Weeders blocks it. Runner goes and back to first. Just kidding. <laughs> Kensler with a wise decision. <laughs> <laughs> Started to take off, so Weeders look back to third. Torino's back there, and uh, take a look at Kinsler now. A little bit of a secondary. He sees that ball get away, and he thinks I'm getting a second, and then thinks twice about that as Matt Weeders hopped out from behind the plate, and with that golden arm, probably would have been out by a mile. First and third, one down. And the throw over to get him back. Kinsler four out of ten stealing bases 56 stolen bases for this Texas team this season. Youngster pro fire trying to pick up an RBI. And we'll take the pitch for a strike. Texas is fifth in stolen bases on the year. The Orioles are now seventh in the American League. Pro fire checking down at third base. Gary Pettis for the signs, third base coach. Britain, the 1 1 delivery outside. Two ball, one strike count. Pro fire is really trying to get his professional experience at the major league level, and that's tough, even if you are good. It's only his fourth year. In pro ball, never played a triple A. That bats in the minor leagues. Uh, he played in 304 minor league games, about 1,100 minor league at bats, but they were low minors. 2 1 delivery, check, swing, strike. Two and Duke. Well, there are a lot of ways to take a look at this pitch from Zach Britton. I wonder if it ever came down into the zone and it broke just at the top. Zach Britton gets the call there, a late breaking slider. We talk about the benefit of bringing young players up. Now, Texas Rangers had a pretty good veteran infield, and Andrus and Beltre, and of course Kinsler. Chopper to short. Hardy will get the big hop. There's Roberts one relay to first, and another double play. That's the second they have turned in the first three innings of this ball game, and it remains tied. Park right there. You can watch the uh, boats go back and forth and walk all the way around the Inner Harbor area. And the concert tent over there where they have summer concerts on the pier. 
That's fun. Yep. I've been there. Don't even have to buy a ticket. You can just sit out by the Marriott Hotel in your chair. There's as many people sit out there on the walkways or are below the line. Although the beer's usually sold out for their shows. 1-1 one, one ball game as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Nick Marquez will lead it off. One for six in the two games. He flied out to left field his first time up. And the pitch from the rookie will miss. Nick hitting a 291 consistency plus from Marquez who just stays right there. Somewhere between 290 and 300. It's at every game, every time you look, that's what the number is. That's right. It doesn't matter where Buck Showalter hits him in the lineup, he stays productive. Arcakis will take the pitch. That's going to be inside on a fastball. Two ball, one strike out. Nick has had good numbers in his career against Texas with a 3-11 career batting average coming into the game. Fouls that one right straight back and a two ball two strike count. A pretty good fat pass on a 93 mile an hour fastball from Martin. Orioles against left handed starters now 14 and 13 on the year. Marquegas a ground ball to second. Kinsler. Run away here in the third inning. Bring Manny Machado grounded out his first time up at last night put on the show boy he was red hot three hits used the whole field went the other way and hammered one through the hole for an RBI and Manny Machado look at that three hit games Manny Machado leading the way with 13 of them this year ahead of Miguel Cabrera Howie Kendrick Jed Lowry Joe Maurer and David Wright pretty impressive numbers for Manny Machado Three plus hit games. Group loaded with all stars. Machado hitting a 314. Still leading the world in doubles. High and deep to left field. That is way back at the wall. And goodbye, home run, Manny Machado. And the Orioles take the lead. Machado delivers the homer and the Orioles take a 2 1 lead in the ball game. Jones a big cut. And that was an impressive home run because this is a really good pitch from Perez down and in with the slider but Manny able to get that head out in front and hammers this one out over Murphy's head and into the sea of orange. Jones on the 0 1 that'll go to short profile up. Makes the throw. Jones is retired. Two down. The Orioles up by a run. Tomorrow, don't miss your chance to meet Orioles reliever Tommy Hunter at the official Orioles team store at the Org Galleria. Tommy will be there 11 a.m. to noon signing autographs. That's tomorrow 11 to noon at the York Galleria, York, PA. For details on all Orioles community appearances, go to OriolesReach.com. Tommy out in the uh, bullpen for the ball game tonight. Here's Chris Davis. Davis grounded out his first time up. Chris now in an 0 for 12. And a tough month of July for him, hitting only 115. 364 in May, 290 in June, 348 in April. And every hitter is going to have a time, and right now it's Chris's here in the first games of July. Still a couple home runs in there, though. Yep. So still obviously a very dangerous hitter. And you know that opposing pitchers are aware of the danger he possesses. Foul tipped into the mitt. Pierzynski and Davis with a one ball two strike count. Chris of course is going to be in the home run derby. <laughs> Hit it here. And they got him. 
So Perez will get a call. Third strike on him there. The Orioles though will get the lead as Manny Machado last homered on June 30 against Corona and the Yankees picks one up here. And that will give the Orioles the two to one lead. the four who are going to go I was talking about the impact of winning last year has had on the Orioles in their play this year particularly for the players we create expectations you see the fans they blow us up on Twitter good and bad you know we lose a game you see why <laughs> you win a game good job and it's but we've created expectations for ourselves and that's what you want in sports you want to win and winning brings a lot of expectations in Birdland they have them now, which uh, they haven't had in 15 years, and now social media is a part of that, the new, the new uh, realm of that. So we, we, we enjoy the expectations because that means that we're doing something right. Tell you what, Adam Jones is so aware of what's going on around him and, of course, what happens in this Baltimore community, and he has taken it upon himself, really, to try to keep things going in the right direction here. We've talked about him being such a great leader for this team and, you know, handles everybody so well, handles the media well, but it is all about winning with Adam Jones, and he knows that this city wants winning badly. And so does he and the rest of this ball club. They share that. Nelson Cruz at the plate. Cruz leading it off grounded out his first time up. And we'll take the pitch inside. We go to the fourth inning. 2 4 0 for the Orioles. The Rangers won 3 0. Beltre's had the home run for Texas. The Orioles the homer by Manny Machado and the RBI single by Brian Roberts. Cruz will foul that one back. Cruz another one on his way to the All Star game. Noted today there may be some additions pitchers who start on Sunday do not go to the all star game at least to play they can go to be introduced and there are three starters right now who are all stars who are scheduled to start on Sunday one two delivery will be bounced down low Iwakuma Isashi Iwakuma with Seattle supposed to go Sunday Justin Verlander of the Tigers is supposed to pitch on Sunday and Bartolo Colon is supposed to pitch on Sunday. So if they do, there'll be three other pitchers who will be named to the All Star team. Two ball, two strike count, Nelson Cruz. And a little one hop short to sink it in. Played by Roberts, and Cruz has retired, one away here in the fourth inning. Time to check in on our AT and T mobility trivia facts. Yeah, one was, shy. Yeah, just one. Win shy of 50. Last time they won 50 games was prior to the All Star break was back in 1997. They had 55 wins and 30 losses. Was that a good year? Of course, they made the playoffs in 97. Yeah, it was a real good year. <laughs> yes, it was. The Buck Show his ball club trying to do that tonight against this Texas team. It's already up to 52 wins on the season. Beltre had the home run his 19th of the year. And we'll take the pitch way up high for a ball. Beltre now has an 11 game hit streak hitting over 4 
35 during the streak with five home runs and seven RBIs. All star third baseman. Beltre will take the pitch down low. And the count goes to 2 and 0. Zach Britton. One walk, no strikeouts, a couple of double playground balls that have really helped his cause. 2 0 delivery on the way off the end of the bat. Well, Zach's got great movement on his two seam fastball. That one at 92 miles an hour, and it tailed about six, eight inches off the plate. And he can harness that movement, get it on the plate. I mean, Zach has so much potential I mean, to be consistent. That's going to be a base hit into left field. Boy, does he lean back to try and drive a baseball. Think about hitting off your back foot. He's two for two in the ball game with a homer and a single. And a couple good swings there from Beltre. Of course, a first pitch fastball for a home run. This is an off speed pitch. And you see him get behind that well. It's the weight on the front foot and then stays back behind the baseball. So a runner on and hit number four for the Rangers. Each team has four. A.J. Persinski's picked up one of them. He had a base hit his last time to the plate. Veteran catcher will foul that one back. And he too trying to drive one. Krasinski's last home run, he got a three run homer Sunday against Houston. Six of the eight home runs he's hit this year have given Texas the lead. For Zach Britton here at home, he's 1 1 this year with a 3 3 8 ERA. He's had 21 career starts here at Camden Yards. He is 9 and 7 here at home. And that pitch is in there. Krasinski's behind on the count 0 2. Good fastball right there from Zach. And you see some pretty aggressive cuts on pitches that are up in the zone. And the reason why is when you're facing a sinker ball pitcher like Zach Britton, the first thing they tell the hitters in the offensive meetings is see him up, see him up. So seeing some aggressive cuts, some of them even up out of the zone. 0 oh, 2 delivery. Przinski chops, protecting the plate that time. And the count will stay at two strikes on him. Zag Britton making uh, only his sixth start for the Orioles. The team's gone two and three in the starts he's made. Non decisioned in the last outing, giving up only two runs on six hits over seven to the White Sox. 0 oh, 2 count. Beltre off first. Brzezinski reaching. That'll go to second. Roberts, they'll try for it. Took him off the bag, I think. Going to get the out call. Good play. Hardy had to go towards center field in order to get that, and they'll get the force out. A yeah, really good play right there by J.J. Hardy. Brian Roberts with the little spin move, but he lets it go a little bit too early. And J.J. Hardy, just to get that force at second base, able to keep that right foot on there. Nice play by J.J. and Brian. So the out recorded, two down, a runner at first base now, Przinski. That'll bring up Andrus, who hit into a double play his first time up. Elvis Andrus. He's got the five-game hit streak coming into this ball game, and he will take the pitch for a ball. Andrus against the Orioles hits an eight of the last nine he's played against the O's. Here at Camden Yards, a 3.48 lifetime hitter. Only place he's got a better average is Cleveland. Ground ball towards the hole. That's going to be a base hit. McClough up with it. Brzezinski will stop at second base. Second hit of the inning, first and second, two down. Not too often you see balls get in between Manny Machado and J.J. Hardy, but this one is perfectly placed and finds the hole. So Murphy will come up. Orioles are up by one. Two on for Texas here in the fourth inning. Murphy flied out his first time up. Murphy getting started in left field. Orioles shading to left. And the pitch will be taken away for a ball. Murphy's 231 off left handers and 223 off righties. He too has had some struggles at the plate. Still has 10 home runs, 30 RBIs. 
1 0 delivery to him and a chopper foul at the plate. They have met before in the first wild card game playoff last year. The Orioles winning at Texas, of course. 5 1 in that ball game after Texas had taken the season series from the Orioles. 1 1 delivery. Great pitch. Had him reaching. 1 and 2. Ah, beautiful breaking ball from Zach Britton. After a nice two seam fastball, he throws this one hard down and away. Uh, down and away. Take a look at the Verizon Vios Exmo right here. Beautiful pitch. Great to see that rotation on the slider from Britton. Remember, Verizon Fios making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable internet. That's powerful. One two delivery on the way. Slow ground ball, second base. Roberts has got it. He'll make the play. And that will retire the side. So no runs, two hits, no errors. Two are left on base. And the Orioles maintain a two to one lead. Nate McLeod band a t-shirt night a part of what the, the Orioles hope will be a winning night here at the ballpark double plays helping out early they have kept the runners off base for Texas Manny Machado delivering his seventh home run of the season coming in the third inning after Roberts had the RBI base hit and the Orioles have a two to one lead in the ballgame. J.J. Hardy will lead it off. Hardy grounded out his first time up. And the pitch is down low to him. One oh pitch to him. And Perez will miss with that one. <laughs> Brzezinski every time the ball is not a strike. Brzezinski throws it away. <laughs> that one's not working. That's pretty good. Two and oh. Used to be if you're going to have a ball thrown out of the game, you had to get it to the catcher, the home plate umpire, and the home plate umpire would throw it away. Right. Nowadays, you watch players, they throw all balls away. They do. Pitchers throw them over, catchers throw them over, outfield give them to the fans. Yep. Yeah, everywhere. 3 0 delivery, Hardy will take it. It's in there for a strike. Hey, isn't that funny? I mean, in, in infielders, a ball will you know, get thrown down to second base and they'll just shake it yeah. and throw it off. Yeah. 3 1 delivery and a ground ball that'll go to short. Profile bobbles. So the error will be charged. Hardy will reach, and the young shortstop commits the error. You know, one of the problems with calling up younger players sometimes uh, some inconsistencies and not very fundamentally sound position right there. You see his legs still on the move, and that ball kicks up and catches him in the heel. That could prove to be a costly error. But JJ on at first base, and Matt Weeder's being pretty hot. So Hardy on. And Weeders coming up. Weeders a single and scored in the second inning on the base hit by Brian Roberts. Weeders will pop that one up. Third base. Or short. Nope, third. 
Beltre is there and he's got it. Beltre saw the error. The guy next to him decided I'll take that one. <laughs> On Friday, a Birdland fave favorite returns. 20,000 fans, 21 and over, get the 83 World Series 30th anniversary floppy hat presented by Miller Light. After the game, a great fireworks display. So get out, support the team, have a great night at the yard. Save on tickets, bought in advance, 888-848-BIRDOREALS.COM. That's coming up Friday. In fairness to Profire, not only is he 20 years old, Profire has played five different positions in the last six games. I mean, he's played shortstop only twice. They've put him in the outfield. They're trying to see if he can play outfield for some games. He has played at short in uh, two games in those starts. He has played as a DH. He's played as a third baseman and a left fielder. Right. That's tough. Well, he's he's learning uh, some versatility, and it certainly is tough, especially on a younger player that hasn't experienced it and to learn at the big league level. But I was talking earlier just about the veteran players that he has around him. That certainly will help him down the road. But, of course, the Rangers need help right now, and I think a lot of teams, and Buck Showalter has changed it here, at least the culture in Baltimore is you're not going to learn in the big leagues anymore. You better know how to play the game the right way if you're going to play for the Baltimore Orioles. At the middle, Nate McLeod. The Bandits got a base hit, and he's two for two in the ball game. He's liking those T-shirts. The Orioles get runners on at first and second. Well, pretty much a base hit in any ballpark. Whistles this one right back up the middle. Perez ducking to get out of the way of that one. Boy, Nate's getting his playing time in against the left-handed pitchers. He came in hitting 250 against left-handers. Like Joe Waller was pulling him out against lefties early on in the year, but as soon as he started picking up the numbers, Mike Joe Waller put him in there. McLeod hit only a buck 97 against left-handers last year. Yeah, and Buck having the confidence in Nate McLeod, the more times he puts him in there, of course, the more comfortable Nate McLeod is going to be. Chris Davis talked about that. You know, the opportunity to now face lefties and righties all the time certainly helped him become a better hitter. Now Roberts, another chance. So Brian's night for RBI opportunities. First two at bats. Picked up the RBI base hit in the second inning. Now he gets a chance here in the fourth. And the Orioles try and right this runner in scoring position number. They are one for two in this ball game. 0 1. Buck Showalter before the game talking about those runner and scoring position numbers that have not been good. He's asked, you know, do you just look at it as a bump in the road and you just know it's going to get better? He said, oh no. He said, we notice it. I want it corrected. I want it corrected right now. Yeah. Oh, it, it's not something that just goes, you don't just go, oh well, in passing, okay, we're going to have that. No, no. Let's get this fixed. 1 1 delivery on the way. Roberts ground ball to short profile redemption. There's one Kensler and there's two. No runs, one hit, one error, and one left on base. So both teams using the ground ball double play to help the pitcher's cause. Play balls, Brian Roberts to J.J. Hardy. There's the strong arm, the clean double play. 
Zach Britton gets another one to J.J. Hardy. Look at the fundamentally sound turn there by the Orioles. Zach Britton appreciates that. A great defense behind him. And look at that 93 double plays turn this year. That's third most in the American League. So not only do they make all the plays, but they turn double plays as well. Look at J.J. Hardy, Gold Glove shortstop and all-star. Chris Davis on the end of all of those double plays. And Brian Roberts with a couple nice turns as well. Manny Machado has started some incredible double plays himself. Incredible quick release and a strong arm. Hardy's had to learn to work with the ongoing uh, merry-go-round at second base. Roberts one night, Flaherty the next, and then Casilla the next. Yeah, that's tough. But, uh, they've made it work. Brian Roberts out there tonight. Chirinos will lead it off. Chirinos drew a walk his first time up. We'll take the pitch down low. Chirinos had a misplay at first base earlier. Again, a player who's out of position. He's a catcher, third baseman. But they don't have anybody else to play at first base against left handers. So uh, right now, Baker would be playing, but he's injured. Jeff Baker's on the DL with a right thumb problem. So Chirinos gets to play at first base. 1 1 delivery on the way and a swing and a foul ball that hit him on the foot. Chirinos came up as a third baseman in the pros. He was converted to a catcher. So he's had infield experience, which is why Ron Washington felt I can put him out there at first base and at least know he's been around the infield a little bit. Sure. And it's great to know that he's caught before, too. I mean, boy, that's invaluable for a team. One ball, two strike count. Torinos will lift that one in the air to center. Jones going back. And he's got her lined up. Torinos retired, went away here in the fifth inning. Our PNC Minor League report brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Yeah, Christian Walker once again getting on the Minor League report. Delvar Delmarva, great numbers, 353, three home runs and 20 RBIs. So they're challenging him, push him up to high A. Frederick, where the numbers, numbers are getting better, especially those power numbers. Eight home runs and 31 RBIs and 51 games. Great batting average as well, 290. And he's been added to that Futures game roster. Another good sign for the Orioles Minor League organization. Only 22 years old for Walker. And here is Leonis Martin. Martin had a single his first time up. First hit in the two games. One for five now. He draws Manny Machado in. He's got outstanding speed. Machado will really challenge him at third base. That's about as far in as Manny will come on a hitter. One away, 2 0 count. Backs up a step or two now. Britain's pitch, that's going to miss up high. And the count goes to 3 0. See the innings 1 through 5 on the money. 6 plus, not so much. <laughs> yeah, a little off the money there. Look at that 20.25 earned run average. The trouble getting through that sixth and on. Taken, that's in there for a strike. Well, I think a lot of pitchers, that's. The challenge for the, a, a starter is when you have to face a team a third time through the order, you know, they're going to make adjustments on you. You have to find a way to somehow trick them and make it through the game. Martin is on with a free pass. That is the second issued by Britain in the ball game. One on and one down here in the fifth inning. And you turn it over. Kensler at the top of the order. Kensler is flied out and hit into a fielder's choice. One away. Kensler, another one of those Texas hitters who does well against the Orioles. He's got a 13 game hit streak going against the Orioles. A 319 hitter, lifetime here at Camden Yards, and he's hit in seven straight ball games here. Runner goes, getting picked off. Davis will make the throw. Great one. They got him. Chris Davis, he put a little extra oomph on that one, and Martinez retired. Boy, what a really good play by the Orioles defense right there. Of course, nice pickoff move by Zach Britton. He goes first move, but Chris Davis jumps out and creates a lane. Now, the Orioles defense is pulled around, so J.J. Hardy's in the hole, so Brian Roberts takes this throw. He's got to step up in front of the base. That's a beautiful play and a tough one at that. So two down with Kinsler at the plate. Nice throw by Davis. Count on one. 
That and the throw to third base by a first baseman, two of the most difficult plays they make. One, they don't make them very often, and two, the angle's not very good. 0 right. 2 count. But Chris got that one down there in a hurry. Goes as a caught stealing, which is totally unfair to pitchers. Here's the 0 2 delivery. Fouled off. That's the rule change that ought to exist, just to be fair to pitcher. That's a pickoff. Yeah. But they give it a caught stealing because he was running. The pitcher gets a pickoff only if the guy ends up going back uh -huh. to the bag. But the pitcher ought to get credit for that play right there, and they never do. I'm sure they don't care. It's an out. Here's the 0-2 delivery, and it's outside. One and two. Kensler, the most difficult batter in the American League, to strike out. Nick Marcakis had that spot for a bit. Nick is still in the top ten in that regard, but Kensler. Right now is the most difficult. Marcakis is sixth. That'll go to center field for a base hit. He's hot. Eight game hit streak now for Kinsley. So he gets the two out single. Gets a chance to talk with his former teammate. Oh, if we'd set a table up down there in a the bar, we'd be all set. Could have made a lot of money in this series. Every guy that gets down there. We noted last night everybody who was down there has a chat, chat with Chris from yeah. Texas because they're all friends. There's Erickson Profire. Profire will take the pitch outside for a ball 0 for 2. I know I'm getting old when I remember him from the Little League World Series. Yeah. He played for Curacao. Yep. He was their big star in the Little League team. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. He was to 1 1. Was he on the same team as uh, Jonathan Scope? They, I don't know if they were on the same team. I, if I remember right, Profire actually played two Little League World Series one when he was 11 and one when he was 12. Okay. And I don't remember if Scope was on one of those teams or not. Throw over to get him back. We did talk about Profire, however, and the Department of Tourism in Curacao said, why don't you come down? Visit the island. Huh? I thought that was a great idea. Beautiful. Thinking about a place for a vacation, I'll tell you, that was a great spot. Here's the 1-1 delivery on the way, and that'll be bounced. And the count goes to 2-1. Two, two away, runner at first. Orioles have the 2-1 to one lead. Zach Britton up to 79 pitches thrown in the ball game. He has walked two, struck out none. 2 1 delivered, and Profire will take it outside, and the count goes to 3 and 1. Longest outing for Britton in the starts with the big club this year, seven innings, and that was his last start against the White Sox. He has thrown as many as 62 pitches prior to, uh, I'm sorry, 101 pitches is as high, and that was his first start against Seattle. 3 1 delivery on the way, and he walks him. So two walks and a single in the inning. And that caught stealing pickoff play looms ever larger. Rickett air on his way out. Yeah, obviously going to tell him to be more aggressive in the strike zone. Zach Britton, the only time he's really gotten hurt in this ball game are elevated pitches up in the zone. And and sometimes you look at Zach and you think all he needs to throw is that two seamer and just throw it over the plate, and keep it down, and he'll have success. Texas has stranded three two in scoring position so far. Now with two away and two on and the Orioles up by one Nelson Cruz coming up. He has grounded out twice. Cruz hitting 306 with runners in scoring position. Texas so far in this ball game 0 for 3 with these chances. Kensler at second pro at first. And the ball fouled off. The numbers for Cruz this year, given these chances. Obviously, they're number three hitters, an RBI producer.
Oh one count. Roberts holding the runner close at second base. And that ball will miss down low. One one. Cruz came into this ball game tonight hitting 362. Lifetime against the Orioles. That's a big ouch. 1 1 delivery to him. Cruz wraps that one to third. Manny Machado cannot get it. Ball will slow down enough for Kinsler to score. And a two out RBI base hit by Cruz will tie the game up at two. Well, Cruz continuing to stay hot against the Orioles. And he just beats this one by Manny Machado in the hole. There's a pitch from Zach. And it's a two hopper that shoots through that 5 6 hole. Kinsel Ryan Roberts trying to keep him close out there. Pretty good secondary lead, though, scores easily on that base hit. So Cruz will get the RBI. And we are back to a tie ball game. Cruz gets RBI number 68 on the season. Cruz RBIs is tied for third now with Arncanacion in the American League. Now the dangerous Adrian Beltre two on two down and we'll take the pitch outside for a ball. Eleven game hit streak two for two in the ball game raises his average to three fifteen. Oh my gosh. He's got another one. Goodbye home run. A two homer ball game for Beltre and this one's good for three and uh, Texas using the long ball a 5 2 lead. And Beltre swinging a hot bat obviously this year but this ball game has been red hot and take a look at the Verizon Fios. That pitch is just up in the zone and he back legs it fall behind on Beltre. And he's looking to hunt a heater and he got one up and out over the plate. First multi homer game against Britain this season. Beltre all smiles. What a night. Three for three. Four RBIs. Two home runs. Numbers 19 and 20. And that will be inside to Pierzynski who has singled it into a field of choice. So the walks in the inning really hurting Britain. He walked Martin, then got him on the caught stealing, then walked Profire. Profire scores, Cruz scores ahead of Beltre. And the breaking ball strike on the inside corner. A four run fifth inning. Last night it was a six run sixth inning that led Texas to the win. And swinging at a pitch away. One ball, two strike down of Puzinski. Gosman in the bullpen. So Britain's given up as many home runs to Beltre tonight as he had in the previous five starts overall. Manny Machado not going to get there for this one. Pretty good effort right there, though, by Manny. Had a pretty good line on that ball, getting a little. Close to the wall, though. I think he had a thought of maybe diving for it, but wise decision not to. One two delivery to right field. Nick Marquez is over and we'll put it away. So Krasinski is retired, but not before four score. Cruz a single and an RBI. Beltre a three RBI homer.
Cleveland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game gets five hundred dollars for any Orioles home run. Thomas Carey's already won a thousand dollars tonight for your chance to be the Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game. Play five card cash. Go to mdlottery.com slash Orioles to enter. So if you believe in good luck charms Texas has got a couple of them going for him right now. One they've got Torino's who's playing at first base. He's made six starts for them prior to this game. They've won all six. Wow. Secondly when Beltre hits a home run they're 15 and two. Well the Orioles are looking to obviously get to Perez. They've had a couple more opportunities and we've talked about this here recently last obviously in July just runners in scoring position and they've had opportunities again tonight and they just need to keep getting guys on base and it will they will come through. And the leadoff batter for the Orioles will be Nolan Rymold. Rymold a strikeout victim his first time up. Perez on the mound no walks two strikeouts for the 22 year old left hander. The Rangers now have picked up five on eight hits with an error. The Orioles two runs, five hits, no errors. Three left on by the Rangers and two by the Orioles. Perez gets it in, gets the chopper. Beltre misplayed it. He got stuck right in the middle, and Reimold is on. Oh, you're exactly right. Beltre, a real good third baseman. But he comes in, he's thinking about able to get that short hop. But can't quite get there and gets caught in between and just unable to snare it on the glove side. And they will call that an error. So the error on Beltre will be the second error committed in the ball game by the Rangers. Profire, the other one at short. Opens the door for the Orioles. Here is Nick Marquegas. Nick has grounded out and flied out. Perez delivers to him, and it goes under the glove of Tenerius into right field. Cruz will have to come in to get it, and the defense letting down the starter as that one just went right through the wickets. First and third for the Orioles. This could be it. Try to take advantage of some miscues. Give this team extra opportunities, and they're going to get you. Kuros has to bounce off after holding Reimhold on. And just can't quite get the glove down right through the five hole. Marquez smoked that ball. Oh, Rhyme hold easily in the third base. The problem of players out of position showing up in this game. Yes. We talked about it. You got a catcher third baseman playing first. And he's had a couple that probably should have been stopped at least that have gone through. Another error charge. Two errors in the inning. This Texas team was ranked seventh in the American League. In defense. And here's Manny Machado. He will take the ball in the air. Second base, Kinsler. And he's got it. Kinsler had to cover because there was a little collision. Chirinos and Marquecas ran into each other. And Chirinos started trying to find the ball. Kinsler was there to get it. One away. First base umpire before the ball was even caught. Welke signaled no interference. All right, you see uh, Marquecas off on the secondary. And he sees the ball up. <laughs> Trino's actually chasing Marquecas, and Nick doing the best job to get out of his way. Yep. So Jones up first and third, now one away. And he'll take the pitch up high. Adam 0 for two with a couple of ground balls to short in the ball game. Martin Perez, the 22 year old left hander, trying to work his way out of the inning and pick up his defense in this inning. Jones will take the pitch for a strike 101. Now, this is another great opportunity for the Orioles. A couple of errors. Oh, I'm holding scoring position, tuck away here in the middle part of this ball game. One ball, one strike delivery. Runners off first and third. Jones inside. Martin Perez, if you're wondering why he hasn't started many ball games this year, it's only his fifth. He took a line drive off the arm and spring training off the wrist, and he had uh, an ulnar bone fracture on that line drive off of the bat of Brad Miller. So he's was on the DL. Yeah, he he was fighting for the number five spot coming out of spring training. And 
And an uh, unfortunate uh, injury there. Here's the 2 1 delivery. Jones. Foul tipped it at the plate. 2 and 2. Adam fooled on that one. There's that changeup. And it's been so effective. Take a look on the Horizon Fios Exmo. Change up down in the dirt. Now he's throwing that off his fastball that he's been throwing 92, 93, four miles an hour consistently. So it really makes that change up an effective pitch. Great arm speed. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Adam fouls it back into the screen. Orioles down by three. Big chance here to step in with the Texas defense opening the door. Rymold on an error, he's at third. Arcagas on an error, he's at first. Infield, of course, looking for another ground ball. Two ball, two strike delivery. Jones chases the same pitch. No need to go anywhere with it. Runner at first, so Jones can't run. Adam staring out at. Martin Perez. What's that? Yeah. I mean, just another effective change up to Adam Jones down in the zone. And you have to protect when you get a fastball that he's throwing 94, 95 miles an hour. And that good arm speed, it just, it, that change up becomes a really tough pitch. And it's working for him right now. So there are two away. Runners remain at first and third. Here's Davis. Infield shift on. He has grounded out and struck out. Oh, and that one punked him. Got him on the front side. That'll load the bases. This fastball taking off up and in on Chris Davis. And catching him right off the tricep and also got A.G. Przinski right in the face mask. The seventh time Chris Davis has been hit by a pitch. And the first hit batter by Perez in the five games he started. Now the uh, little visit will come from Mike Maddox, the pitching coach here, to try and settle it down. You take a look at uh, Chris Davis taking it off the arm and then the ricochet knocking Krasinski's face. Mask right off, kind of ringing his bell for a second, so he's happy to kind of take the time to go out to the mound, take the cobwebs out a little bit. Said it was the uh, seventh time Chris Davis has been hit by a pitch, probably the 700th time or 7,000th <laughs> yeah. time Brzezinski's been hit by a pitch. Davis now third in the American League being hit by a pitch. Big at bat, big moment in the ballgame. Bases are loaded, two down, fifth inning. Two errors and a hit batter. Hardy reached on an error and has grounded out. Sacks are full. And the pitch on the outside corner for a strike. There they are. Rymold the error. I take us the error at second. Davis on at first base. Chased one upstairs, the heater, 0 and 2. And just challenging JJ right there, and JJ expands his own a little bit on this fastball. He sees it up, it looks good, but it takes off at the top of the zone. Orioles 1 for 5 with runners in scoring position right now. Here's the 0 2 delivery to Hardy, and that'll be foul back. Man's going to get a big bonus for that catch. Throws with the wipeout on the mound. He lets this one go and just ooh, the front leg slips and he takes a bite out of the dirt. That was a pretty good fall. That yeah, was. Hardy one for ten with the bases loaded this season. 0 oh, 2 count. Hardy will take the pitch down low. One ball, two strikes. Perez, that was that speed changeup. It yeah. was an 87 mile an hour changeup rather than the 81. 
Britain hoping for help from the bats. One ball, two strike count. Timeout taken. Puzinski. This is where a veteran catcher, this is why Texas picked him up, signed him as a free agent. Young staff, 22 year old. He saw a hesitation. He didn't want any part of that. He went out to the mound. Well, a lot of things come involved. Now, Nick Marcake is out at second base, and you know, the Orioles don't relay signs or anything like that, but A.J. Pruszynski has been around long enough to know that a possibility could be there. He calls the infield in, possible change of signs, and certainly makes sure Perez is going to be committed to the pitch that he's about to throw. With two out and runners in scoring position, the average against Perez is 308. Orioles one up at Hardy. He does! Base hit in the left field! That'll score Rymo. Marquegas coming to the plate. Two on the RBI base hit. And the Orioles come right back to make it a one run game. They love it. J.J. Hardy with the big clutch. Base hit right here. The base is loaded. Nick Marcakis chugging all the way. Beltre recognizes that and just cuts it. RBI's 47 and 48 for Hardy. And the errors costly. In an inning that should have been over, the Orioles take advantage of it and have put two across. Have two on with two down for Matt Wieters, who has singled and popped out. And Wieters will take the pitch for a strike. Everything in this inning will be unearned. And that's all right by the Orioles. Davis, the lead runner on at second. Hardy on at first base. 0-1 delivery to Wieters in the air. Left center field. Going over to get it is Martin, and he's got it for the out. But the Orioles will get it. A couple of unearned runs. They take advantage of two errors and just one hit with two left on. 5-4 Rangers. Brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at MBUSA.com, and by Five Hour Energy Shots. Gary Thorne and Mike Mordek here at Camden Yards. Good ball game. Both these teams getting their bats going here in this series. Zach Britton is done. There's the final line. Yeah, Zach Britton really knocked out because of that fifth inning where he gave up four runs, but eight hits, five runs, all of them earned. Three walks kind of hurt Zach. 91 pitches total. A rough outing, but now Kevin Gosman in in relief out of the bullpen, and he has been phenomenal for the Orioles out of the pen. Great stuff, beautiful change up right there. Very effective pitch for him. Of course, has all the weapons of a starter. The Bucks using him out of the bullpen on the year. 
This will be his ninth appearance. One and three record, 5.97 earned run average. Opponent average at 299. Lefties 282. Righties at 321. But he has been almost unhittable coming out of the bullpen for Buck Showalter. He pitched three days ago against the Yankees, won an inning in two thirds, gave up a walk, and had a strikeout in that game. So Kevin Gossman on here to work for the Orioles, their long relief man. Elvis Andrus will lead it off against him, and it's a strike. Britain did not strike anybody out in this ball game, and that is the first game that he's had without a strikeout. This season the strikeouts have not been high. Only he's had a couple of games where he's had only one as high this season five but none in this one. Which is fine for yep. Zach Britton. I mean he really should be more of a pitch to contact type pitcher anyway. Ground ball Machado can't get it. Hardy does with his no play. Andrus with great speed. So a base hit for Andrus and the leadoff man on here in the sixth inning. These two offenses continue to pound it out. They sure do. But Kevin Gosman, look, the comparison between starter versus reliever as a starter, 7.66 earned run average, an opponent batting average at 333. Look at the numbers as a reliever. Are there any numbers? Nothing for an earned run average. Just a 160 opponent batting average since coming out of the pen. I mean, great learning experience, I think, for Kevin Gosman, obviously, to build his confidence, but learn from some of the great arms down in that Orioles bullpen and watch the game, learn from the starters. I think this is going to be a great experience. Back in the day, so many pitchers used to learn in the bullpen. It didn't matter if you were a starter in the minor leagues. You go right to the bullpen and learn how to pitch in the big leagues. Gosman here with nobody out and got to keep an eye on Andrus over there at first base. Murphy up is 0 for 2. Ball will get away, but not far enough to move the runner up. Buck Showalter was talking about Gossman in the bullpen. Was asked about whether or not he's going to stay there. Do you want to pull him out? Do you want to send him down to Triple A so he can get some start? He said, "Look, we need a long reliever. We don't have anybody else. And so long as the starters aren't going deep, I've got to have Kevin Gossman in the bullpen as the long reliever for games. Here it is. This situation. They want him to be a starter." But they can't make that move right now because the starters just aren't going deep enough. And the what if somebody goes two, three, four, or even five innings, what if, what are we going to do? There's the answer. Right. So he stays out there. Buck was kind of funny. He said, Gossman saying he's getting all this experience, learning a lot, being in the bullpen. He said, it may be all of that, or it may be Gossman's going, hmm, I go to Triple A to start, or I stay in the bullpen in the majors. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. That Either way, it works. Say, yeah, send me back down to the minors. No <laughs> way. Whatever it takes, stay in the big leagues. David Murphy with a 2 0 count. And there's pretty good lead over there at first base. Not going. Murphy will take the pitch away. And he falls behind him 3 0. Murphy. Torino's waiting on deck. Uh, Moreland's going to come out to pinch hit. He's in the on deck circle. Now, with a right hander out there, Ron Washington could get Moreland in, who is a regular first baseman. 3 0 delivery on the way. That is in there for a strike. Just a little get me over 94 mile an hour fastball right there from Kevin Gosman. Of course, he can hump it up to 97, 98 miles an hour. And great life in that young arm. Three ball, one strike delivery to him. Ground ball, second base. Chance again. Roberts, Hardy, Davis. Pitcher's best friend in the Orioles tonight. One in the second, one in the third. They get another double play here in the sixth. Yeah, another beautiful one helping Kevin Gosman out. You see Brian Roberts with the big power feed. That's long distance. J.J. Hardy with a quick pivot. Perfect throw. Chris Davis, Kevin Gosman certainly appreciating that one. So Moreland will come on as the pinch hitter. The regular first baseman for the ball club who made the start in the game last night. Moreland had an RBI base hit. He went one for three, had an intentional walk as well. Two down, bases empty. 
And Moreland will take the pitch for a strike. Kevin Gossman who likes to work quickly. Gets that ball back. Glove up. Gets the sign. If anybody slows him down it's going to be Weeder sometimes behind the plate. 0 1 delivery on the way and the pitch will be taken down low. One ball one strike. Well, you know pitchers uh, like to get in the rhythm. Have good tempos. Kevin Gosman likes to work fast. Certainly the players behind him appreciate that. One ball one strike delivery coming. And a chopper that will go to second. Roberts on the fourth hop will make the play. And uh, no runs, one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base. Another double play to help the cause. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Solo shot in the first off Zach Redden, but Manny Machado with the big answer. He can see young lefty takes him deep to left field for a big home run with the Orioles a little bit closer. But Beltre strikes again, a big blast once again off Zach Redden. But J.J. Hardy with the bases loaded gets the Orioles that much closer. Nick Markakis and Reimold in to score. It's a tight ball game. Couple of young lefties going head to head. Perez and Zach Britton. Perez five innings pitched. Remember, Geico saving people money on more than just car insurance. Bottom half of the sixth inning. Nate McLeod, Bandit Knight, two singles, two for two in the ball game. Three hits, five at bats in the series. He'll foul that one away. Mitch Marlin stays with the ball game. He'll be at first base after pinch hitting. Texas, the five runs on nine hits. The Orioles have put up the four runs with the assistance of three errors in the ball game, but two big ones in that fifth inning. And six hits. And uh, just snub foul. Well, Nate McLeod, he can get the extra base hits. 26 on the season. Pretty equal distribution, though. 14 on fastballs, 9 on breaking balls, and 3 on changeups. So make mistakes out over the plate, and he can drive them from some extra base hits, proving it right there. One ball, two strike count. Right here. Hit it here. Hit your t shirt. One, two delivery up high. Two ball, two strike count. Going to be seeing these t shirts around town for a while. Two balls, two strikes on the cloud. Outfield in a couple of steps over towards left against him. Nate goes the other way, and it'll be foul. Some people call me the Space Cowboy. Some call me 
Here's the 2 2 delivery, and the pitch will be taken up high. Did they expand it? <laughs> Just substitute the word. Three ball, two strike count of McClough. Roberts and Rymold to follow. Baltimore chop. Mm -hmm. Got him. And Marlin helped the cause as veteran first baseman can do. You get off that bag as soon as that ball touches the glove and maybe a little sooner. Yeah. I mean, it was close. He really uh, got off there aggressively. Pretty nice play by the youngster Perez. He had to adjust his body. That underhand flip took some time though. And see how close it was at first as he stretches. And he did indeed make that play. Very close at first base. Here's Brian Roberts. Roberts a single and an RBI is hit into a double play. You don't want to make the first base umpire look bad, but you do want to help him if you're the first baseman make the call because lots of times the umpire watches the bag, is waiting to hear the sound of the ball in the glove while the foot, where is it? Has it touched the bag or not? So they're coming off early. One, the ball hits the glove sooner, so you get the sound. And the other is he's watching, and the figures, if you take your foot off the bag, you must have the ball. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it tough on him. It is not an easy job, that's for sure. Because you can't watch it all. I mean, you got to pinpoint as an umpire something that you work off. 0 2 delivery to Roberts back into the screen. Perez up to 84 pitches thrown. Considering the number of base runners the Orioles have on and three errors committed, that's not bad. We think the count might be a little bit higher for him. Here's the 0-2 delivery, and Roberts will take it away. Well, if this kid can pitch the rest of the way, he can be a real help to Texas. By the looks of things, Roberts will ground that ball to short. Profile. When Profile gets ground balls, it's an adventure. <laughs> and there are two down here in the sixth inning. When the Orioles win, everyone wins. And all season long, when the Orioles win and score five or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu price online orders at PapaJohns.com by entering promo code Orioles5. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's valid at participating Baltimore area Papa John's. Well, so much of the game, and you talk about Profar being kind of an adventure out there, especially younger players. They have to learn to develop their their clock for the game. And you see he's kind of speeding things up out there. Manny Machado is just one of those rare um, talents that he just has a built-in clock. He, he knows the speed of the runner, speed of the ball, what he has to do. Profar kind of a little on edge out there right now. Might be just lack of experience. Obviously, he's a very young player, but the amount of time at shortstop, very tough position to play. Turnover pitch right there on Reimold. And a one ball, one strike out. Nolan reached on an error in the fifth inning and scored. A couple of RBIs picked up by Hardy in the inning on a single. RBI home run, Manny Machado. Roberts an RBI base hit for the Orioles, four. Fouled off. Beltrace had two home runs and four RBIs leading Texas in this ballgame for the third baseman. A big night so far. He's been helped out to the RBI by Cruz. And uh, Texas has the 5 4 lead at the moment. 1 2 delivery up high. Rymo, the Orioles DH, and batting ninth. 2 2 delivery. And speaking of DH, as David Ortiz is closing in on the all time DH hit mark. Ortiz is four hits shy of the record held by Harold Baines. Baines had 1,688 hits as a DH. Ortiz has got 1,684. And a swing and a miss struck him out. So Perez retires the side in order. We've completed six here at Camden Yards in a one run ball game.
This four-game set as it will be Wei and Chen returning to the mound for the Orioles. Texas has not yet announced their starter for the game. Our coverage on Masson 2 HD begins at 6.30 with those extra presented by Geico, followed by game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Masson. Gorgeous night. And there are clouds that uh, drifted over. A couple of sprinkles before the game started, but nothing uh, to interfere with the game. We've had two real nice nights for baseball here in Baltimore. And a big crowd tonight 29,160, 29,160. On the bandit of the bases night, Nate McClough. There's a lot of uh, anticipation for Wayne Chen's start tomorrow, isn't there? None more so than for him. Right. Oh, yeah. He's chopping up the bit. Nate looked like he was going through signs as a third base coach out there. <laughs> yeah. the buckle, hat, ear. Seventh inning. And the pitch will be taken up high. Texas batting here in the seventh. Leonis Martin. Followed by the top of the order, Ian Kinsley. And that one will be taken down low for a ball. Two all count. That is going to be outside. Kevin Gossman on in relief of Zach Britton. Faced only three in the sixth inning, giving up a single, got a double play. Martinez single and a walk out of the nine hole so far for Texas. I guess he showed bunt <laughs> after the ball was in the glove. He was taking three and one. Pretty good nine hole number hitting a 293, five home runs, 16 RBIs for him. And that's inside on a walk. So the leadoff man on again, the single in the sixth inning, and a walk here in the seventh. On Saturday, the Orioles host the Blue Jays for a special 4 o'clock game. First 20,000 fans, 15 and over, get the Adams-Jones replica road jersey. Back your birds. Don't miss a great promotion and a very important ball game in the division. 888-848-BIRD. Go to Orioles.com. Kinsler coming to the plate leadoff batter is singled it into a fielder's choice and he's flied out. And the throw over to get him back standing. Martin kind of jumping back to the bag. Yeah, good snap throw by Gosman. We understand Josh Lindbaum is going to come out of the bullpen and will be making the start tomorrow. And they said it was between uh, Lindbaum and one other pitcher who worked in the ball game last night, Ross Wolf. So. Ron Washington has made his decision. Kensler with a 1-0 count. Kensler has had a single, scored, and into a fielder's choice flight out. Seven game hit streak for him. Martin stepping it off at first. Machado even with a bag at third. And all of a sudden. Kevin Gosman can't find the strike zone here, and he falls behind him to and out. A pretty close pitch right there. Certainly could have helped Kevin Gosman out if he got that call. So 2-0 to a dangerous Kinsler. And he will take the pitch for a strike at the knees. Gets the call there, and the count goes to 2-1. Yeah, there you go. Maybe a little makeup call. Umpires never do makeup calls, you know that. No, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Kensler with the base hit, he's picked up now a 14 game hit streak against the Orioles. Two one delivery. That's on the inside corner for a strike, and it goes to two and two. Yeah, real good breaking ball right there from Kevin Gosman. See this tight rotation. Right at the bottom of the zone. Young right hander with a 2 2. Kinsler will take it 3 and 2. 
No, Ian Kensler, who we told you, is the toughest strikeout to get in the American League. He works a lot of counts deep because he just doesn't swing at pitches out of the strike zone. He has walked 26 times. He has struck out 23. Wow, that's impressive. 3 2 delivery, runner goes, ground ball to third base. Machado took a look. Only play is going to be at first. So Martin will go down to second base since he was running. Kensler's retired, one away. Yeah, Martin's speed keeps him out of that double play. Of course, being on the run, there are a lot of runners, though, that Manny Machado would have given that ball up and let the second base and turn him, but he was right on top of Brian Roberts. So smart choice by Manny Machado. So Profire stands in. Profire is a switch hitter. He said uh, coming into the game 200 right handed 270 left handed and all three home runs have been hit left handed. Profire goes after it and fouls it back. Joel Walk scored in the fifth inning has hit into a double play and has flied out. Your question has been answered. Michael. Profire and Scope were teammates on the 2004 Little League World Series championship team. Profire homered in the uh, championship game, and Scope earned the save and relief. Oh, I'll be. How about that? Here's the 0 1 delivery on the way. Big time cut, 0 and 2. Razor in the bullpen. Jonathan Scope uh, doing some good things. Of course, spending some time on the disabled list this year, but he's going to be coming back soon, making some rehab starts, and then probably be back in AAA. Oh, to the count with one down. Reach four, fouled away by Profire. Not many little league ball clubs at any level who play together, I would think, who've had. One, much less two <laughs> players make it to the majors off the same team, even if they are the all star teams. O2 count on Profire. Gossman with the runner at second base. Hardy right behind the runner. The O2 delivery and Profire will take it down low for a ball. Nice block right there by Matt Weeders. Kevin Gossman with a one ball two strike count. We're in the seventh. Rangers had the 5 4 lead, but they had a three run lead. The Orioles cutting into it. Two on earned runs in the fifth. And now we get down. Thump time here late in the ball game where the Orioles scored a lot of runs. Pro Fire will take it. Two ball, two strike count. The young 20 year old has drawn just 10 walks. 26 strikeouts. He's put the ball in play pretty well. Two and two. See JJ Hardy right in the back pocket of Martin out there. So far again takes it on a breaking ball. And the count is full. Three balls, two strikes. That's some pretty good takes by the youngster pro far right there. A couple of tough pitches down in the zone. He doesn't even flinch on him. Three two. One away. Martin off second base. Pro fire puts it in the air. Left center field. McLaugh going back. Way back. Can't get it. Off the base of the wall. It's going to score a run. Jones trying to track it down. Pro fire will stop at second base with a double. And an RBI in the 6-4 Texas lead. That's a pretty impressive at bat by the 20-year-old. Well, it was impressive. He took some tough pitches and then he hit a really tough pitch, almost one handed. The pitch is off the plate. An unbelievable carry he got on that ball as he beat Nate McLeod deep in the gap. Adam Jones there with a good backup to keep Profar at second base. Profar gets the RBI. Profar, that'll be his 10th RBI, and this is 35th game. And here's Cruz, runner at second now, still one away. 
And Cruz takes the pitch on the inside corner. Texas now three for six with runners in scoring position tonight. Oh one delivery on the way. Gossman will miss with it. One ball one strike. Cruz with a five game hit streak after he picked up the single in the fifth inning. Good for an RBI. He's one for three. Nelson Cruz their fine right fielder. And again double digits and hits for Texas. They got ten. And it got a short. A look to third but Hardy will get the out. Profile took off and with his speed able to make it over there. Cruz retired two down. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Ryan Madison the bullpen they're going to walk Beltre. He's already got two home runs and a single three for three ball game. Yeah, too many good swings tonight. Bill Beltre will draw the intentional pass. His fourth of the year. And A.J. Przinski, the veteran catcher, will get the at bat with two on and two out. And his ball four. Matt Wieters will go out to talk to Kevin Gossman. Gossman kind of looking over towards the Orioles bench to see if a pitching chain was coming. Well, Brian Mattis out there in the intentional pass. You would think something might be up as AJ Przinski, the left hander, coming up there, but looks like he stays. Yeah, nope. Just giving as much time as possible for Amadis to get ready. So Showalter on his way out. And Kevin Gossman will be coming out of the ball game. And the Orioles manager wants the matchup here with a lefty against lefty. Gossman out. Left hander Brian Mattis coming on to work to Pierzynski. For the Orioles out of the bullpen, 3.67 earned run average, 28 strikeouts to 10 base on balls. Brian's done a nice job. Obviously for Buck Showalter and Rick Adair, look at the opponent batting average at 211. Lefty's hitting just 130. Of course, that's why he's in in this situation. Right, he's at 315. Brian Mattis, you see the inherited runners stranded and. Uh, He's got him on in this inning. Runners at first and third. Already a run in. RBI double by Profire. Martin with that leadoff walk. 
Orioles walks in the ball game. There have been a total of five, four unintentional. And you got to Pro Fire drew a walk in the fifth inning and scored. And here in this inning, Martina walk and he has scored. First and third, Pro Fire third, Beltre on it first. A.J. Pierzynski, a single fielder's choice, and he's flied out coming up. Pierzynski against Mattis, one for six. So here's another big at bat. Six, ten, and three for the Rangers. The Orioles, four, eight, and oh. The Orioles have two unearned runs on the board and are trying to keep this game at two. Krasinski will take the first pitch. It's a ball. Krasinski 247 off lefties, 290 off right handers coming into the game. He's had only one of his eight home runs against the left hander. Well, I know delivery. He was trying for two. Yeah, he sure was. Pretty aggressive cut right there on a 90 mile an hour fastball from Brian Mattis. Yeah, he wants to do some damage. Obviously, any mark will do for Texas, but Brian Mattis and the Orioles want to hold him right here. Here's the 1 1 delivery to him. 2 and 1 on Przinski. Two, two tough hitter against the Orioles, 330 career average, 345 here in this ballpark. His only better yard to hit in, Kansas City. And he takes it to right. Marquez coming, diving. It's a one hopper. It'll score a run, holds the runner at second base. So Pierzynski delivers a base hit and an RBI. That'll bring Profire in for the seventh run of the ball game for Texas. Well, Nick with a great effort. He wanted to preserve this run from scoring, but what a play just to knock that ball down. That would have probably scored Beltre if it gets by him, but great athleticism by Nick Markakis in right field. 11 hits now for Texas. Pierzynski's got his 31st RBI. Elvis Andrus will take the pitch for a ball. Texas doing some damage with two down. Andrus has had a couple of singles and he has hit into a double play. One oh delivery to him. Andrus rips the ball to the gap left center field. McLeod diving. He's got it. A slide on the grass. And Andrus is retired and saves at least one run. Seventh inning stretch time at Camden Yards. The Rangers on top.
Washington yards. Gary Thorne and Mike Bordick. This Texas team is, uh, is just very tough for the Orioles to play against. Since 2011, the Orioles have only won three ball games and lost 11. This, this is just a tough team that somehow finds a way to put some numbers up against the Orioles. It really is. I mean, the last couple of years, they have been the toughest team for the Orioles to beat. And every time they come into Camden Yards, their bats come alive, and they're doing it again in this series. The Orioles have to find a way to somehow neutralize it. It looked like the double play ball was going to work for them, but some big hits for the Rangers really busting out here in the middle part of this ball game. The Orioles have to find a way to fight back. They've had extra opportunities tonight, some miscues, three errors by the Rangers, and only been able to take advantage of it in that one inning. So we really got to make some marks. Getting the runners on base, the Orioles done a little bit of that, but again, that runner in scoring position number troublesome for them, but well within reach here as we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. The Orioles have the top of the order up. Marquecas, Machado, Jones. Martin Perez has gone the distance. He hasn't walked anybody. He has struck out four in the game for Texas. A pretty impressive performance. Two and one record in the four starts. Team's gone three and one in the games that he started this season for the Rangers. 2 0 delivery, and that'll be outside, and Marquegas gets ahead 3 0. Orioles needing base runners here. Out hit 11 to uh, 6 so far in the ballgame. And that pitch is going to be taken, and he's on. So he didn't get a strike in that one. That was the first walk. Let's take a look at our Alexis the Towson drive of the game. Hey, it was Manny Machado. He went out and got this slider out in front of the plate, got his arms extended, and hammered it. Big home run right there. Our drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, Baltimore's number one Lexus dealer. See why at LexusofTowson.com. So Ron Washington out. He'll make the pitching change here, I think. And there it is. Gave him a little while in the bullpen, but uh, Perez just unable to go any further here. He's responsible for the base runner on. Manny Machado, the Orioles are the middle of the order coming up here in the bottom of the seventh. Shoulders on the mound, the 22-year-old left-hander Martin Perez, leaving the ball game, picked up four strikeouts. Adam Jones, unable to catch up with those pitches that were down low, kept some away. And a very tough pitcher to go against with those two big changeups. Yeah, another pretty good outing for the youngster, just 22 years old. Six innings, just six hits, four runs, only two of those earned, so it keeps his earned run average down low. One walk and four punch outs. Works up to 99 pitches. A new pitcher coming in in relief. Jason Frazier. This will be his 34th appearance. 2.59 earned run average. Has 28 strikeouts. And nine base on balls. See the opponent batting average at 220. Lefty's hitting just 143. Right, he's a quick better at 254. He's got three pitches. Fastball, slider, and a split finger. And you'll see him get to that split finger when he's ahead. 
Fraser, you see the inherited runner's number. Fraser, a lot of years in Toronto where the Orioles saw a good deal of him. He's a veteran, 35 years old. Has worked uh, in a closer role along the way. With Toronto last year, 50 games went 1-1 one one with a 4-12 ERA as a middle reliever. Here is Manny Machado, runner on at first base, nobody out. Seventh inning, he's had a home run. His homer came in the third inning, his seventh of the year. Marquez is on at first base, and that'll be fouled away. This will be the first at bat Machado has had against Fraser. Fraser has appeared against the Orioles the second most times against any particular team. Boston, the only team he's had more games against against the Orioles. He's a 307 ERA, 27 career games here at Camden Yards. He's had 30 at Fenway. 0 1 count. And it'll be outside. One ball, one strike count. Manny now pushing the average up at 390 mark. 315 rather with the uh, hits 123. One ball one strike delivery that'll be up high and away. He's in chase with Miguel Cabrera to lead the. American League in hits at the All Star break started the day three behind Cabrera. Batting average eighth in the league. Marquez with a walk on at first. Fraser with a 2 1 delivery. 3 and 1. Oh, Manny kind of chasing him out of the zone after that big cut on the first pitch slider. Three straight balls, not even close. Outfield deep swung around towards right on Machado. 3 1 delivery to him. He will take a strike. Rick Showalter talking today about Manny Machado and keeping under control. The Bucks where it's where he's being tested sometimes on strike calls against him. He is a rookie. He is a second year player, but a young player. And you got to remember that, he's told Manny. Do not let your emotions. Get in the way of the game. Runner goes, got him. Throw down, not in time. So Machado is called out on strikes, and there's an interference call to go with it. They're both gone. Home plate umpire field, and Calbreth has called strike three on Machado and an interference. Yeah, the call interference. Manny kind of stepping across home plate, but I don't think he obstructed A.J. Przinski at all with the throw. Take a look. Manny stepped across. If his arm hit Manny, and indeed it was. That's what the call was. Manny sees the pitch down and just starts walking. A.J., look at the act there. Jeez. He sold that one. That's a veteran catcher. Buck wondering if he made contact with him. And I think that's what A.J. Prasinski was trying to sell. You see Manny taking that half step. And A.J. realizing he's probably not going to get Mark K because he does catch him on the elbow. And then the Wrestling Federation fall right here back. They try to sell it. And then the trainer and the manager come out to see if Przinski is okay. Act two. All right. That's a big play. Yeah, it really is. A strikeout and an interference call, and two down. Nobody on here in the seventh. And Jones coming up 0 for 3 in the ballgame.
Here's the 0-1 delivery. Jones will put it up in the air. Right center. And it'll be hauled in by Cruz. So a very disappointing inning on a big call and a strikeout and an interference call. 7-4 to four Rangers. tonight. Manny Machado is seventh home run coming in the third inning. J.J. Hardy delivering a bases loaded single two RBIs in the fifth inning and Adrian Beltre he's had two home runs and a four RBI game three hits and an intentional pass. Text in your vote A B or C three one eight two six. Dave Maggot in the hitting instructor trying to reframe uh, with a big smile on his face as Krasinski came back to the dugout. After that half inning, put a little salt in the wound. He actually gets credit for an unassisted double play. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. I take nothing from AJ. That was that was a performance. That's what you do. That's I what mean. you do. David Murphy up. Murphy came on as a pinch hitter, sixth inning. Brian Mattis stays on the mound for the Orioles. Moreland in the lineup. Or Murphy not as a pinch hitter starter. Moreland coming up the pinch hitter on deck. Here's the 0-2 delivery and that'll be outside. And there is Krasinski. A lot of people over there trying not to smile. Yeah, right. I mean, he was pretty dramatic with it. I'm surprised he didn't ask to have a couple throws to make sure he could still throw the baseball. <laughs> Filed away. Look at him. <laughs> Eats the towel. One ball, two strike count. And Murphy went around on it. Tag is put on. A nice breaking ball right there from Brian Mattis down in the zone. Murphy cannot check his swing. Way too far on that one. Now Mitch Moreland will get to hit. He grounded out as a pinch hitter in the sixth inning. That is the first strikeout. Oriole pitchers have picked up Britton, Gossman, Brian Mattis. Moreland playing at first base. With one away and nobody on. And the pitch taken down low for a ball. One oh count for Mattis. And the 
pitch will miss a fastball. That's going to be down low, and the count goes to two and zero. Oh. Pretty good pitch at the bottom of the zone. Some of the Orioles fans letting the umpire field and Colbreth know that I think a couple of the calls are going against the Orioles. Moreland 274 off left handers 256 righties coming in. Roberts will be in front of that one and record the out. And there are two down here in the eighth inning. On Sunday, the first 10,000 fans, 15 and over, get the Orioles replica batting practice hat. It's presented by DAP. All kids 14 and under will get the chance to bring their major league dreams to life as they'll get to run the bases at Oriole Park after the Blue Jays game. That's on Sunday. Get your tickets in advance. Save at 888 a bird or go to Orioles.com. Darren O'Day in the bullpen for the Orioles. Martin to be followed by Kensler. There are two down here. Leonis Martin has picked up a walk in the seventh inning and scored. Walk in the fifth inning, got caught stealing on a fine move by Britton over to first base. He singled in the third inning. And he'll take the big cut on that one. Tanner Shepard's in the bullpen for Texas. Their starter, Perez, gave up four runs, two earned on six hits over six plus innings, a walk, and four strikeouts. One ball, one strike delivered. Fair ball over the bag. Davis right to it, and that'll do it. So Brian Mattis, solid one, two, three inning. Orioles coming up at the bottom of the eighth. The big bat, Davis, Hardy, and Weeders. Fifty dollars to support the Y of Central Maryland's Fit and Fun program. Two hundred nineteen walks, ten thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Seven four lead for the Rangers, and they'll go to the bullpen again. Right, Tanner Shepard, he is their setup man. This will be his forty third. Game 1.88 earned run average, 29 strikeouts and 17 base on balls. See the opponent batting average at 205. Lefty's hitting 243. Righty's just 169, and he is a power pitcher. Strong fastball, get up in the high 90s, with a pretty good slider to go along with it. 26 years old, out of Mission Viejo, California, and the pitch is taken inside by Chris Davis. Orioles down by three in the eighth inning. Davis been hit by a pitch 0 for 2. Looking to get out on 0 for 13. And Chris is in at the moment. Shepard's in his first appearance here at Camden Yards. 2 0 delivered. And Chris will take it inside 3 0. Shepard started the year 
as one of the best relievers in the game. He led relievers with a .64 ERA to the beginning of June. But he's allowed six runs in his last six outings. Over four innings pitched and his ERA went from .95 to 1.88 which is still the eighth lowest for relievers. Three ball one strike delivery to Davis in the air center field. Martin went away in the eighth inning. Swings for the fences now with a new home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. Play as one of the real home run derby participants from the past three years in arcade mode or in derby mode that recreates the authentic home run derby tournament experience. Available on iPhone and iPad. Download MLB.com's home run derby for free. Chris, of course, will be in the home run derby this year in New York. Hardy coming up a single. He's reached on an error and he's grounded out. JJ at 255. Tanner Shepard's 0 1 delivery to him. Hit hard to short. Profile. Two pro hops. Two down. Before the Orioles and Rangers play tomorrow, tune in to the Mid Atlantic Sports Report 5 to 6 30 on Masson. You can join Rob Long, Dave Johnson, Mel Anton, and Phil Wood. They'll take a look at the starting pitching depth of the O's, and they'll go beyond the beltways to the biggest headlines in all of baseball. That's tomorrow, 5 to 6 30, the Mid Atlantic Sports Report. A couple of quick outs. Weeders, a single a run scored. He has popped out fly down. Left-handers with that 243 average you saw of Shepherds. 1-0 delivery. This is inside. 2-0. Oh. Two-o oh delivery. We just will take it. It is a strike. Weeders. Has faced Shepard's once, 0 for 1. 2 1 delivery. That'll bounce away off Pierzynski. And a three ball, one strike count. Well, we talk about it time and time again. Just find a way to get one or two guys on. There's all the thumpers in this Orioles lineup. Everybody has the ability to hit the long ball. 3 1 delivery on the way, and leaders will follow back. We'll be right back with you tomorrow night, game three, and the return of Wei and Chen. He'll be on the mound for the Orioles to start the ball game tomorrow night. The Orioles will be facing Josh Lindblom. Foul back. Washington making that decision tonight. Wei and Chen uh, on the just DL since May 13 with that oblique problem. He'll make his ninth start, his third here at Camden Yards this season. 3 2 delivery. And Weeders puts it up in the air, left field. Murphy. He's got it. And Shepherds comes on and retires the side in order. We go to the ninth here at Camden Yards with the Rangers on top.
It's brought to you by Ocean City, Maryland. Discover Ocean City, Maryland's free beach, great accommodations, and exciting dining and nightlife. Book your vacation at OCOcean.com. Darren O'Day now comes in in relief. This will be his 42nd appearance. Look, look at the wins. 5-0 and oh this year. He would love to get another win tonight. 2.09 earned run average. 40 strikeouts with 11 base on balls. The Orioles would love for him to pick up a win. That's for sure. Opponent batting average of 213. Lefties 327. Righties just 140. So O'Day will come on. Mattis worked an inning in the third. Had a strikeout and a hit against him. O'Day will face the top of the order. Kensler single one for four in the ball game, an eight game hit streak for him. He's had three hits now in nine at bats in these two games. Kensler, Profire, Cruz do up. O'Day's delivery, and that'll be taken for a strike. Kensler, a one for two off O'Day. And Kensler's got another one. Well, he's just like unstoppable. So Kensler here in the ninth inning picks up a single. Let's take a look at our Major League Notebook in this date in baseball history. In 1991, Cal hits a three run homer in the All Star game that would give the Junior Circuit the 4 2 win over the Nationals. And in 2011, the Dayton Dragons sold out their 815th straight home game, setting a new North American professional sports record for sellouts that had been held by the Portland Trailblazers. Wow. And I checked today, they're still on. Here's Profire. Bunting, foul ball. The Dayton Dragons, the A ball of the Cincinnati Reds, have sold out 956 consecutive games going back to 2000. Eight and eight, uh, how about that in Dayton? They love their baseball in Dayton. Well, congratulations to the Dragons. Jeff Rebele ever goes to those games. He's from Dayton, Ohio. Is he from Dayton? Yeah. Chance to coach in front of a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one count, Profire. Profire with a double RBI, a walk, and a run score. And we'll take the pitch for strike from O'Day. O'Day now over the last two seasons is 12 and 1 for the Orioles. Sandy Koufax would say, You are the vulture. 0 oh, 2 count. Well, fire with a big cut. And O'Day gets a strikeout. Kind of unfair to the youngster pro far backdoor slider and then this rising fastball up above the top of the zone. He chases it. Beautiful pitch here from Darren O'Day. Boy, what an effective pitch that fastball is. So one away, one on. Here is Cruz, a single RBI, one for four. Sandy Koufax used the nickname the Vulture, which is now a term in baseball. He used it on Phil Regan in 1966. Regan went 14 and one with the Dodgers in relief. That ball drilled to center field way back. Cruz got it. All of it. It'll go off the middle of the wall. Coming to third base, Kensler. He'll be held. Throw to third. They got him trapped. Kensler went too far around the bag, and Waiters puts the tag on. Gary Pettis, the third base coach, was giving him the stop sign. But Kensler. Kind of came around in no particular hurry to get back, and the Orioles caught him. Well, it's all about the court awareness. Great play by Adam Jones. One hand, one hop off the wall. But J.J. Hardy knows what's happening behind him, and he did not hesitate to throw behind Kinsler. And he gets him clean there. Kinsler says, oh, boy, I'm caught. A nice little rundown right there as Manny runs him back to Matt Weeders. Beautiful play by the Orioles' J.J. Hardy. So there is a double credited to Cruz. Runner at third base now, but two down. Oh, mercy. Beltre going for a three homer ball game right there.
Rebeltre is 25th multi home run game. He's had two this year. Here's the 0 1 delivery. And a shattered bat bloop that's going to fall in for a base hit. So Beltre is on with his fifth RBI as Cruz will cross the plate. And such are the baseball gods. Yeah, that's a big RBI right there. A real good pitch from Darren O'Day. This slider breaks off the plate about a foot and a half. And so does Beltre's bat. Just shatters it in half. Wow. When he finds a hole. Just unbelievable. Darren O'Day just can't believe what happened there. That makes the Rangers five for ten with runners in scoring position in this game. Perzinski's had a couple of singles and an RBI. He'll take the pitch inside for a ball. So it is a. 8 4 ball game and 14 hits have been put up by the Rangers after they got eight runs on 12 hits in the ball game last night. Pierzynski, the 1 0 delivery to him outside for a ball. Just to finish the story on Regan, Phil Regan in 66, he went 14 and 1 at a 1 2 1 6 2 ERA, did it all in relief. Koufax was on that great team with the Dodgers, and Koufax said, You are the vulture. Mm -hmm. So, vulture is a term that's been used for relief pitchers who tend to come on, work an inning or two, and continually pick up wins. That ball is popped up towards third base. It'll be handed by Machado with a big run in, a run on three hits. One left on the Orioles will bat bottom of the ninth inning down by four. Last night it was Ian Kinsler. Tonight it's Adrian Beltre. He's had two home runs on the night. He's got five RBIs. The Orioles can't seem to stop the Texas offense. They get opportunities to get back in this ball game, but weird things have been happening all night long to the O's. So the Orioles getting ready to face the Texas Rangers bottom half of the ninth inning. Do or die. Ninth. Let's come back upstairs now to Gary Thorne and Mike Ford. All right, Tom and Rick will watch with us as we wait to see what goes on here. Yeah, J.J. Hardy and Manny Machado uh, probably discussing what happened on that last play. Beautiful heads up play. And of course, Manny Machado ready for that backdoor throw from J.J. Hardy. A couple heady baseball players there. Corey Burns now coming on in relief. Just called up. This will be his fifth game. 3.86 earned run average. Four strikeouts to two base on balls. And he has a few pitches, but his changeup is his go to pitch as two seam fastball and a slider to go along with it really impressive numbers coming out of triple a round rock before getting called up on Washington we use him in this situation after that big add on run to make it eight to four so Burns a closer in the minor leagues he had 16 saves fifth in the Pacific Coast League when he was called up Ron Washington's uh, Watching a pitcher who came over from the Padres and will work out of the bullpen for them. Burns worked against Houston on the seventh, worked an inning, had a strikeout. And now we'll work the Orioles here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Non save situation. Nate McLeod will lead it off for the Orioles. Roberts and then Reimold will be due up here in the bottom of the ninth inning. 
as the Rangers trying to win their third game in a row in the first two of this four game set. And Burns pitches outside for a ball. Two singles and a ground ball out for Nate McLeod. Nate now three for six in the first two games. He's trying to get on and wasn't going to swing till he took a strike and that one's in there. One on one. Kind of a unique delivery, uh, like Louis Tion. Swings around, doesn't he? Yeah. Turns his back to the hitter. McLeod will pop that up shallow left field. Look out. Catch made. Murphy shortstop profile the youngster was calling for it. clearly Murphy's ball and he smiles because he made the catch updating you on the voting for the AT&T player of the game Manny Machado on top right now still time to text in your vote at A B or C three one eight two six results in the O's extra post game show. That'll bring up Brian Roberts RBI base hit he set into a double play and has grounded out. And the pitch will be taken down low. Dickerson's come out in the on deck circle to pinch hit for Reimold. One oh delivery on the way. And that will be taken for a strike. The Yankees have been beaten again by Kansas City three to one tonight. The Yankees have now lost three in a row. They started the day a half game. Behind the Orioles for third place. Roberts in the air. That'll go to center. Martin. Two down. So two away, nobody on. Chris Dickerson will hit for Rymold. As it stands, Martin Perez would be the winner. He would go three and one in his first outing against the Orioles. Zach Britton would be the loser. He'd be two and three. One and one lifetime against Texas. No save here. Two down. And the pitch taken down low by Diggerson. Rangers, if they can get the win, 16 games over 500, that would be a high point for them this season. Here's the 1 0 delivery by Burns in the air to center very high. Martin is there and the ball game is over. Three fly ball outs recorded. Burns works the inning. Their bullpen. Sheps run a couple, didn't give up anything. Fraser an inning didn't give up anything. And Texas has taken the first two of this four game set. Game three coming up tomorrow. Wei and Chen will make his return for the Orioles. And Josh Lindbaum will be on the mound for Texas. Our coverage begins at 6 30 on Masson 2 HD with those extra presented by Geico. Our game action at 7. This has been a Masson presentation. Tom and Rick standing by O's Extra presented by PNC coming up and a look at a big night for Beltre and Machias. Machias. I want Manny Machado with the long ball. That's going to do it for Mike Mordick and all of our crew. 